low error day, five percent ten high level. That's that the dog you get out. Okay, so now let's <coughs> run the inversion. Inversion goes to run the Okay, now so let's uh, maybe you can make that bigger yet too, Deb. Uh, you want to talk about the parameters first? Yeah, want me talk to about the parameters. So the parameters here, when you look at it, are pretty much the same as when we did the uh, linear app this morning. So we need to look at the linear inversion. The show you the parameter. Yeah, for example, this is the menu. So row naught is going to be the starting model. Usually, that is also. And there will be a reference model. Reference model, she may reference more. Reference model mean like predicted more. Reference model is your uh, first guess at what might be there. You think that the average resistivity in Ong Sang Park might be uh, 150 ohm meters. So I'll my own general set to the meet the down the down it. Yeah, we have Reference models or so that the beta model, the application beta model, but young game level. Alpha S and Alpha Z, they control those two uh, components of the model norm. Uh, alpha S controls how closely your solution will be to the reference model. So Alpha S could draw a reference model and then Nisa and the Rishi Amashi body. Alpha Z controls how much. Uh, Structure is going to be in the final model. If you don't want very much structure, if you want to make it very smooth, then alpha Z should be large. So alpha Z go, number go, T J up here. Adi, u u u, we have like smooth piano, low piano, low smooth piano, low piano, piro. We show to him, we show to him, right? The nonlinear problem is more complicated than the one that we saw this morning, and there's going to be a number of iterations that are carried out. So the nearly by the after all, when I got looked at the nearly by the show, so the nearly by the look at the nearly by the show. So each iteration is going to have its own beta value, its own Tikhonov parameter. Each uh, in iteration. Well. We're going to, it's like each step. So I'm trying to solve a problem, I do step one, right? Mm -hmm. Then I do step two. Those are like iterations. It's like uh, how many points they're going to have defining that curve that they were working with before lunch. So that's so that more complicated than me. So. I have another, I have another analogy for the work for Okay, okay, so we're having to proceed in a nonlinear uh, problem like in steps. So we, we do a step. We're trying to get to a minimum. We're trying to get to the lowest value. And I might start here, right? And then I might go here, and then I might go here, and then here, and then here. So it takes me a certain number of steps to find the minimum. So non-linear matter of the yard made the next zone ball, the next zone, so now I'm gonna get a minimum point, but the minimum two yard would go to a city and yard in it, or I have a city in it, the point will be on the point if you will you be the water to go to the water. So the procedure is I'm going to start with a big value of beta and then gradually reduce it, and each time I reduce it, is an extra step. So, but now as only to a beta y, then we am yain it for me. We don't matter if it's short, short, short. We don't matter. Set for me. These others are not at this point crucial. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, okay. So now, now we're going to run the inversion. The inversion goes and see our parameters. So we've set the parameters, the reference model, 196, the alphas, maximum iterations, chi fact we haven't talked about, I will, 
that you don't need. Uh, that you can keep and that's fine so so we have the basic uh, parameters set so now let's just press the run button run button makes it better so you can parameter it fine so now what's happening is as follows so these are the different iterations the uh, values of the uh, uh, so the values of beta are listed here. So notice that we start up at 1,000, then we go to 600, 300, da, da, da. So we're gradually getting into smaller So beta is number one, if you need it, I would. Ne, 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 la, me. The phi D is the misfit. It starts off at 100. Phi D a misfit, ba? Starts off at 167. Yeah. yeah. And as the by iteration eight, it's down to ten point seven. Find the out tower. The model norm starts very small at zero and it gradually increases zero with each iteration. <coughs> model norm. Model so Model norm, the size of the model. Yeah. Model is size global. Model size for model norm look about it. The thing that you called that we called phi m this morning. And that's it for now. So this and this says that the target misfit of 17 data that that has been achieved. That can misfit got 17 data. Come on, looks on the look your corner. So what we asked for was to find a model that fit our target value of misfit. <coughs> the target value misfit, so that misfit target value will bang you out more, bang you out more, like you need to be able And that value was the number of data, which is 17. So, the data number got second level. Okay, so now we've done, but let's now look at the, uh, at the results. So with iteration, so at each iteration, when we start, the uh, the black line here is the misfit. Uh, the misfit body and it's all about. So as the iterations continue, the misfit decreases. So the same thing is, you know, low quality, you know, low low time, low low quality, misfit got your quality. So it keeps going down, and then eventually gets through past the past the target misfit. Target misfit with all right. And and it, well where it reaches the, our desired goal. So this means that the inversion has been successful. Okay. And now we can look at uh, other things. Let's look to see what the uh, Data misfit is. Data misfit so I'll teach you. So the data misfit looks like that. So here's here's the data. So I don't know. Would you say we've done a good job at fitting the data? So I don't know the data table fitting chara or we have machine. Yes, no? <coughs> Pardon me? Not so great. But it's not too bad, right? So but we're going to we're we're going to come back. We'd like actually to fit better. <coughs> so Pardon me? Yeah, let's go back to let's adjust the contact. So, to what do you got? I'll do a chi factor point eight. Oh, the point one. Okay. So what we're now going to ask to do, and we can do it by adjusting this chi fact, is to 
fit the data better and better. So before we had a misfit, a target misfit of 17, now effectively we're going to get a misfit of one tenth of that to be uh, 1.7. 1.7 Okay, so now let's look to see what what happened. If we come out here to yeah, I can't see. Maybe 14. I really want to go all the way to this point. Yeah. So let's look at that. So that now is much better. So the book down line, we miss that one. So let's look at uh, yeah. Uh, let's just go back. Let's look at the model at this point. That's nice. So there's your model. So that's a model that adequately fits the data. Data will fit today. And remember what we were thinking about when we uh, were using the parametric model. We thought that you know this looked like there's a, a shallow aquifer, and it seems as if that's what's happening here. So this number. Here, I think it's around, it's it's around 40, 40, I think. This is about 40, 30 or 40 ohm meters. Yeah. And but uh don't the the more we teach and general more we teach so I got it. Uh aquifer shim she for yeah, I shim she so I don't uh more chat to jira so I think I'm a laser and I don't say I'm the only that I've seen it. Aqua Fabos and you do it. Sir, you got a question? So here's now the, the, you know, the result of it of a smooth model inversion. That okay, smooth kid So you should kid that inversion, right? So what you see is that any kind of a sharp discontinuity, uh, any kind of a sharp boundary. So let's suppose that we really had this. So row one, row two, row three. And if it looked like row one, row two, row three, it kind of goes the wrong way. But if we had, so if this is the apparent resistivity and this is depth, we might have a true earth model, but if we do a smooth model inversion, you know, it might come up something like that. So the smooth will transform something that's blocky. It, it will transition the boundaries. But we still see essentially the same, the, the, the same uh, interpretation that at about nine meters depth, it looks like there's a real low resistivity layer. So at the same time, that nearly my low resistivity sheet, low sheet level, the nearly my jar. But that about nearly the same thing is the low two hundred level jar. But what is that? Is that that model? The oh, so this is a 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 something that is uh, blocky and smooth out the boundaries. So, smooth inversion, smooth I've got an example. At, at the same time, there's many geologies in which the earth is, yeah, so, so if it's like this, then the smooth model inversion might come out like that. So, uh, what is the red? What is the red one? The red, the red is, is the true model. For the most, a niyama is a true model. Look, your eh? Smooth model, smooth model is a do a meya or look dry bones and look dry much about it. At the same time, you have many geologies where the transition is smooth. It it is that this is actually a much better representation of the Earth than this is. So the niyama is go. I smooth model like a video, who goes up you know, you see any towel. 
So let's go back to the app. Back to the app. Thank you. So these are the things that you can you, you can play with. There is a lot of uh, options for changing. Uh, <coughs> and what I what I'd like you to do is to uh, use the app on a couple of the data sets that we have. Can you maybe just bring up the data set? I'm a data set. The nine chair up the upload of the table. I have application to jump the nine to allow me. Now I don't like that. Yes, we, we have a number of, of, of data sets here. So here we've looked at the uh, data at, at the park, but we also have the synthetic data, and we also... Synthetic is a lot of data in the Munai data too, no? And there's also one in the case history that the DRD had taken here. Yeah, the Yilta Bida case history, the third location for... Yeah, it's PES3. So VES3 is a data set that uh, we have inverted and also the DRD has inverted and we have different, uh, well, we have different models that fit those data. VES3 data set, DRD has an inversion of the data, the inversion of the data, and we have a model of the data set. Yes, okay. Malamine data locations three. So Malamine data locations three. So Malamine data locations three. Malamine data locations three. So that's how it's Right. No. No, they want. Ah, uh, no. But you can. I want them to do it as kind of like homework. I know. Exam in April. A Malaysian lawyer. Because we, we don't, we're, because we're running out of time and we only have tomorrow, we want to get on to the 2D uh, modeling and inversion today. But I think because you worked with the the uh, app this morning, and you see this is almost the same type of app that you'll be able to invert the, some of the field data uh, with this with this app. So you should just give that a try tonight, and then we'll see. We can talk more tomorrow. <laughs> Set. So, questions? Okay, so then let's do two things. You can actually just continue to drive. Okay. Uh, so, let's go to Saki's app with the uh, Yes. Yeah. Is the alpha alpha value and row value are they like uh, put the just what is set set into the limited number or which one? How to put? But the matter time is I'm not going to get hands in there. And we want to get a smooth inversion style. So do we just put whatever like all are already set? Just oh yes, yeah. uh, use what's already set to start with and then you can adjust to see what the effects are. <coughs> so the Peter <coughs> Ranji made it. Ranji Roma Yang Chi. Should check. 
but I have a little explanation uh, that you can read, I think. So the alphas then depend on uh, they're, they're controlling the relative sizes of these two numbers. So this is, maybe I could just write close to a reference model. So you have a reference model, and then here you've got some way of characterizing how much structure there is. If you want to over, if you want to be concerned about this, then you'll make alpha. Oh, thank you. The paper man. Yes. Then you'll make alpha Z large compared to alpha S. If you want to make the model close to the reference model, then you make this large. So reference model in it, we had a model in it, and he says, oh, fits in there, so you know, go down, that's an S, bro. I'm looking at that one, that. I'm looking at that. Oh, sorry. <laughs> Alpha S goes in T and look at my book. Alpha Z means structure, but we have line points and two other points and structure look for Alpha Z. So I'm going to put that here. Sure, hello. Okay. Okay, so that's the basics of 1D in inversion. That's the basics of inversion applied to 1D. So that 1D, you don't need basic inversion from the middle So now we want to go to 2D. You've seen some of this before, but we can use it to review. So we have a, uh, we're going to generate a DC resistivity survey and we can set out dipoles along the surface however we like. Dipole go to the new poles and you put the poles and then you join me. One of the ones that you set out was a dipole dipole. Because I set out a dipole dipole. But we can also just have a a single pole or a dipole pole or a pole dipole, we can have any of these configurations. And for whatever 
electrode configuration we have, let's say a dipole-dipole, then we collect a voltage, we know what the, where the electrodes are, so we can convert that to an apparent resistivity. Um, uh, was that to an apparent? To an apparent resistivity. So now the dipole, dipole, you know, you like this one, electrode, they have a machine, there's a thing, man. Be three apparent resistivity, you like general thing, I know, no? And in this case, we're going to plot this, okay, midway between the, the, the center points of these two electrodes, and it'll be here. So I, let's try to put a center point, so I end up here, my And if we move these farther apart, <laughs> Uh, uh, so uh, just go back. Never mind. So here's our here's our pseudo section. Okay. That pseudo section, pseudo section, so I got for my tiny little algo, meaning I need tiny Yeah, all right. Yeah, all right. Pseudo section, but no. Yeah, let's go down. So now we want to we want to generate a 2D DC resistivity model. Okay. 2D, 2D. Look at me. You know that generate that. Look that one. Okay. Yeah. So we've got here's. So here's a cross section of of the Earth. And in this particular case, I've got a, a block down here, which is low resistivity. And I want to try to first generate some data from that. And then I'm going to invert those data to recover this block. So we can adjust uh, the parameters of this block. We could make it wider in the x direction by changing dx. <coughs> dx go change it up today. See, we could make it a block that looks like this. The block we, we could change its uh, depth. So dz. So we have the, have the option of making the block uh, wider, thicker. We could put it down at depth. So that's that. That's an object. It's a a block in a half space, and we can generate data from that. And then we're going to try to recover that uh, information. Any information will be able to subsidize the data table, the regular report, the party report. Okay, so we're now going to do uh, the dipole dipole survey that we just. So now you will have the dipole dipole survey to party. And we're having to forward model the data. So in this case, we need to establish a grid or a mesh. I'm a grid, the more mesh, but mesh will occur, and I will yeah, me. And then we're going to do a numerical solver to find out if we put a current in here, what is the voltages anywhere else in the mesh. So that do it. The moon apples and chip are being moon apples and go. I tell my electric current, electric zero. Yeah, so now we take this dipole dipole survey over top here and we're going to simulate the, the data by clicking <coughs> this button here. So this now is our apparent resistivity pseudo section. Our apparent resistivity pseudo section. You only tie it in the moon up on the moon. 
and yeah, we can stay with this, or we can also add noise to these data. And then the, the noisy data would look like that. Okay, so this is a way of doing a synthetic, uh, a synthetic modeling because we want to we want to test our 2D programs out on something first of all that that we know. Yeah, so we we build a model of some kind of extended block inside the earth. So I can we design a survey, a dipole dipole. And we simulate the data. And then we can add noise. <coughs> right? And then we could write uh, onto an observed file. I don't think we want to do that. We could write onto an observe uh, an observation file. Write on observation file. Yeah, so we then we write this out to a disk someplace. No. <coughs> we write see where it pops up. DC block. Just it out. Oh, okay. So So we've done the simulation and then we've written it out. Written out. Writ yeah, so we write the numbers out onto a computer file. Okay, so now we've gone through that step. So now we have got these data. So this is like being out in the field, you've collected the data, and this is the apparent resistivity pseudosection that you've got. Apparent resistivity, yeah, pseudosection. Okay, everybody. Spinning. Spinning. <laughs> yeah, there's a lot to remember. That's right. We'll we'll go. We can go over stuff. It. We can go over stuff again. But we'll try to, you know, get through everything. So now today we have built like that one. Give me a bit of my. Let me look. Take. I kind of got that. So. What we're, what we're doing here is making an experiment where we know what the Earth model is, we're going to simulate the data, and we're going to write it out onto some file, and then later we're going to take these data and invert them. So I find them again, and I'm going to go to the environment, and I'm going to go to the environment, and I'm going to go to Okay, everybody, so so. Oh. Okay, or? Okay, so now let's, now let's open up the 2D inversion. Mm -hmm. So now we're going to take these data that we've just created and we're going to read them in, we'll invert them and see if we can find the earth. <coughs> yeah, so we'll first of all do the synthetic and then later. So we'll first of all invert the synthetic data and then you'll use the same app to invert your field data. Absolutely, yeah. Do we use all kinds of application to to now there like how many applications are together and there are lots, right? Tons of them. Oh, so 
we Wait, you mean our system? apps or sorry, I oh, mean, application? For, for their in the practical in their for inversion? So it's a, it doesn't mean like if I want to know this one, I use this app. If I want to know the other information, I use another app. Is it like that? Or do we use all the apps at the same time? No, it's usually I've got one thing I want to do, so I use this particular app. So different apps. Different, different apps purpose. for yeah. So sometimes the apps were just to show you where the currents are going. Sometimes there's a 1D, a 1D app for uh, the DC resistivity. Now this is a 2D app. So the specific apps are different because we've tried to make things easy for you to work with. So, Okay, so right now, but you, well, we'll do the 2D inversion, but you'll see that it's almost the same as the 1D, which is, so now, uh, actually maybe just close this up a bit, yeah. The this app is the most important one. Scroll down. Uh, yeah, scroll down a bit. Around a bit. Really, yeah, this will be the one we'll use all the time. So the app that are active, right? Also, general, let's do it. 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 let us do it 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 this is for all your field data. So the steps are again similar. We're going to load the observed data. And the file that we're going to be interested in is the one that we just created. And so we're going to load this file. It's a CSV file. CSV file. Other files that you will use are a UBC file, but for this one, it's CSV. CSV. And then it's, it tells you what kind of file it is. It's a dipole dipole. And my dog, blue fine news on this The information is good to have a limit. Type of type of user on you. And there's 116 data. So, the data is a top point body. And it's going to use a 2D, it says a 2D tensor mesh. 2D tensor mesh. Yeah, so what we mean by that. <coughs> So we need to make a region okay, that encompasses our survey as well, yeah, well it encompasses basically the survey and the depth to which the survey can be seen. So, what is the survey of the company? What is the survey of the company? It's going to use um, a numerical way of solving the equations for DC resistivity. Oh. But the cells, in, in order to do that, it's going to require that the Earth be divided into many cells. So, when we're dealing in 1D, we just had to worry about uh, cells that were changing in depth or <coughs> size with depth. Yeah, we just had layers. So, get the 1D, so in general, by west, I am inside that. So, we have no, no, I live by inside that. The 2D, so in general, keep the cells on the other side of the one. Here, we're going to have to worry about 
cells that go out in all directions. So let's suppose that the beginning of my array is, is here, and the end of my array is, is here. So maybe this is you know, 400 meters for size. Not sure what it was. I guess in this case it was, yeah, close enough, 300 meters. So that's where we're, we're going to do our dipole dipole survey in this region. So we need to divide this region up into many cells. And as a rule of thumb, the number of cells that you should use if for if our smallest dipole is let's say 10 meters, then we want to have cell sizes that are about a quarter or a third of, of that. So that means like delta x for cell size, it should be in the order of 2.5 meters or maybe up to 5 meters. Delta x a cell size would be hard to buy. So it's like that. They won't go. So that means that we'd be having cells in the horizontal direction, you know, that are more like this size. And they're going to go all the way down like this. So we're going to discretize the earth into cells that then look like that. Hello, cells in it, you yeah, you yeah, you quite like the no? We're also going to uh, have to have cells that extend beyond this region. So we're first of all going to <coughs> continue whatever, <coughs> so if this is delta x, we'll first of all continue a few cells out this way at that same spacing, and then we'll start expanding just the same as we did in the, in the 1D. So now we'll start making the cells, the cells grow bigger this way. And the same is going to be true on this side, so we'll have cells that look like this, and then gradually they are going to get bigger. So that's what happens discretizing this way. In the vertical direction, we're also going to start off with small cells. So we kind of keep the same idea that we had for a layered earth. And then they can gradually get deeper or get bigger as, as we go down. So in the vertical direction, the cell size is small at the surface and gradually gets bigger. In the horizontal direction, the cell size is small and stays small in a region where you have your electrodes and then can can get bigger. This region in here, where we're really sensitive to to what is what's going on, is called the core region. The core region. Core region. Core region, look, you are right, but also I, the white don't want to be. This is C down and Nisa zone, she take a job. Sense, she, I don't kind of get the other one. Yeah, so sometimes you'll see in, in the work that it's done that they'll talk about a core region. That's this region in here that the experiment is sensitive to. So, yes, yes, the young little girl, I am a young as well. I go with C here, I do a dream. Core region, look, and then the other 
regions, uh, it is sometimes called padding cells. Padding. Padding. P A D D. Added. You know, you know, cells, you know, it's a full box. A full, a full cell, you know, you know. And that's required so that the, uh, that the boundary conditions or that the, the problem, the numerical problem is solved accurately. So building this, this is called building the mesh. Yeah. And that's another very important aspect of the inversion. Because if you have a poorly designed mesh, then your numerical solution might be wrong. So we're not going to do anything more on that, but always remember that the mesh the meshing is a critical part of doing any inversion. So the meshing part for the meshing <coughs> so if we come back here, I'm not sure if you can make that any bigger, the big mesh. Uh, yeah, I've seen it without a bit. Yeah, I mean, we'll just... Uh, yeah, we just... Change the aspect ratio of it, so we'll just... I mean, I can make it smaller. That's, that's okay. Let's just make one that's really coarse, and then you can kind of see... So this would be a really coarse mesh. Yeah, so, okay, so here's... Here's our region where we have our survey, right? And the core region is 30 meters of depth. Yeah, so the core region is down here, from up there, down to... Any uh, other core region. Cells is same, any other core region. And then everything else are sort of expansion and padding cells. And then, look at that. Padding section or padding yeah, area. just yeah, because we need to make the mesh oh, big oh. enough so that boundary conditions for solutions are satisfied. So solution I found my body solution. Okay, so that's that's now the the mesh, and when we do the inverse problem, each cell is going to have a resistivity that we're going to try to find. So even these cells out here, out here, are, are, have an unknown resistivity, and we're going to want to assign values to them. In the question, I said, no, any cell that they sell down here, resistivity, the arm, look at the low, I think the cell, G, they have a leg, but the arm, we have a leg. Okay, so now, we're back to go. Okay, so now we've built our mesh. So now we're going to plot the observed data. Mesh no be visible. It's a it's a amount of data. Data ring. Set it by it. Plot it by it. So here's our pseudo section. Our pseudo section. Ma, you know, you only have it. And that and that cool. Like the name, let's do that. Come and see pseudo section. You notice that this pseudo section. Uh, cannot be interpreted in terms of geology. Geologically, what we had, we had a block here. This pseudo section is just some way of describing the data, but we can't interpret it geologically. So geology so the next thing, okay, is to, we have our data, we want to invert it, but we have to set the uncertainties. So we're going to decide a percentage at a floor.
okay. So I'm, I'm just going to set up something really small. But. Okay, so now we'll, we're going to now run the inversion. The inversion will run on the main. So here again, you have the same kind of slider bars that, that you had before. So we have a reference model. A reference model is there. We have it now. One thing that's different, maybe can you make that just a bit bigger? So notice now there's an alpha S, an X, and a Z. Alpha X, X is Right. So there's an extra alpha. Extra alpha So that comes about because we now have an extra dimension in space. Because when we were had a 1D problem, we had an alpha S to make it close to a reference and an alpha Z to go down. But now we have to worry about what's happening horizontally. So finally, the the like you mean you mean you need like by two dimensions, the two dimensions are going to be the two polar and the alpha x, alpha alpha z polar. So that gives us this. Actually, let's put alpha s in point oh oh one. Yeah. Uh, that's fine. And then let's put max iter twelve. We can go reason because there's only about 3,000 cells, so we can cool it this. So the chi factor of 0.5, we can cool it quite slowly as well. But it's, I, I, it's fine, it'll, it'll, it'll run. <coughs> sure. yeah, it'll be super great. Okay, so now we're all set, and we can press the run button. All right, we'll set the load we use on now, run button, we'll click the button. So it's, what's that? I'm just checking how much memory it's using so I don't crash it. Yeah, but can you zoom in a bit too? It's a bit, the table's a bit small. Yes, sir. It's great. Achieved after six years. So this, this fi found a final inversion model after six iterations. So let's first of all, so let's just take a look at the beta values. Just So again, you can see how they are changing, they're cooling. 270 down to 4. 5D starts off at 40,000 and gets down to 47. And then 5M, the structure continually to increase. So it's behaving, it's behaving like it should. So now let's take a look at the inversion results. And we'll first of all look at the misfit as a function of iteration. So you can see that it starts up high and successive iterations and continues to, to decrease. That's good. And then let's take a look at the data misfit. So here's, here's the observed data. There's our pseudo section. Well, observed data. And here's the predicted data. And here's the normalized misfits. We just do one at a time. So our misfit is D observed minus the predicted divided by the standard deviation. Now misfit goes to that. Now misfit to that has observed data. Ne general command data. Who can have it up? Standard deviation is R. Now we would expect that these numbers should be kind of like this. If this is zero. And this is one. 
and this is minus 1, we kind of expect that the numbers would be mostly in this region from minus 1 to 1, or maybe some out to minus 2. So we kind of expect the numbers to be clustered right around 0. That would mean we fit the data. And if we are successful, uh, when we look at these normalized misfits, we should have about 95% of the data being between plus and minus 2. So 95% of plus and minus data we have data direction. So we expect that between minus 2 and plus 2, that you should have 95% of the data residuals lying in that region. 95% of the data data. Can you read what that scale is? Is it minus so, three? Uh, it goes from minus three to three on the uh, normalized misfits. Yeah, so this is from minus three to, to three. So that means there's a few points that are sitting out here correlated a bit with where the, where the signal is. But actually, it's overall, it, it's, it's, it's pretty good. And so now let's look to see, to see what the model looks like. Whatever the problem problem is, it's here. Can we see the model? So this is now what the model looks like. So that's not bad, right? We've got we found a low resistivity region at the right location, it's more or less at the right depth, and you know it's it's not a it's not a block. It's kind of smoothed out, but that's that, that that's fine. So that's what, yeah, that's what the true model was. But resistivity So we've gone from our pseudo section to the inversion of the 2D dipole dipole data. So the pseudo section is the same, but we can do the dipole dipole down below look at the bottom. Um, Pretty big? Yeah, I think so. So any questions? Probably lots. So are you, are you actually running that? Have you been running this? Oh, it's funny. It's funny. Oh, good. Oh, good. So I think this is a, this is a good place to, to, to stop. Um, there's been a lot that has gone on today with respect to inversion 1D and 2D. So it'll take a while to kind of absorb all, all this stuff, but that's, that's probably enough about inversion for, for today. What I would ask you to do tonight, since tomorrow is the last day for at least some of you people, that we have that you, you spend a bit of time this evening, try to go through, uh, work through the, the apps and the 1D and maybe the simple 2D example 
and just see if you become more familiar with all of the parameters and what the effects of changing any of the slider bars would be. So, the idea of the ဟုတ်မနက်ကလုပ်ပဲဝန်းတီရောဒီနေ့ညနေရမစက်ပြီးတဲ့ဒုတီရောပေါ့เนาะအဲ့ဒါကိုကျွန်တော်အင်ဇ
one new one. Um, I also have. Oh, oh, this is this much. Do you have Do you have the original the part WS and DD with no corrections? Can you put them on that? Yes. Oh, we're having trouble getting on. Right. What's that? No processing at all. Just I want the original data set. Uh, no, the, the earliest one still has the correction from five to four meters. Okay, so I've got the original one here, but I'll just see if there's some sticks around. I hear here, here, here Mike. Okay. I mean, I've got a bunch of uh, sticks around here. Yeah.
have Simpeg and res and all that for okay. the, uh, the Well, maybe you can show them when they come out. But I don't know that we'll get that far. Well, so do you, do you have so you, you went through forward modeling? Did you do uh, modeling with the 2D as well? Uh, briefly. Just really briefly. Okay, so you didn't look, did you look at park? Did you look at? No. Uh, you didn't no, look at no. any of We haven't looked at any of those. Okay. But do you mean, are you going to show the, the copy down results? I'm going to show them how to uh, process data. Okay, okay, okay sure. Using, using uh, process. Right. First, okay, and that will take up the whole hour. I think. Okay. Yeah. And, and then we can do that specifically for the park data, like tomorrow. I guess. Yeah, okay. and that's what I thought. That we were going to cover the park data today, possibly, or tomorrow morning. Yeah. So no. All, all we did is get through a synthetic forward modeling and inversion of data. So just okay. a block and a half. Okay. Space. Yeah. So I wasn't going to jump in, and I, th I think the orders were going to be the park data first, and then we're going to do the. Yeah. Okay. And is enough well, I just to I finished the slides. Yeah. Doug and I have oh, the yeah. Yeah. So they're certainly. Oh, okay. yeah. I mean, I mean, basically yeah. all, all the data is here. Thanks for the tea. Maybe like you could use an interpretation slide or two. Cheers. Uh, I, I'm not. I feel Q or X are not qualified to be making an interpretation. What's that? I didn't feel. I don't know if I'm qualified enough to make the interpretation. The three data sets and they show quite different things. Yeah, the, um, you know, the, uh, well, I, I, know, I don't know that we're going to show them the rest 2D in video. You know, that was good. Thank you. Yeah, that was good. Um, so, uh, I think we'll just be half time to focus on the UBC software, frankly. But, I mean, we yeah, can so show them the results. Right, right, we, exactly. but we can go over a few of these things tonight to decide yes. exactly yep. yes. what we're going to yep. do. Yep. Just make sure we've got a consistent story. Circulate that disk around and get the two files off of it because we're going to start on that in 10 minutes. Well, so I think most people, it's the process, right? It's process. I think everybody has process on their computers. Does everybody have process? Uh, I'll put the other. I can get your stick with it on. Stick me. Not yet. What's that? Stick me. Actually, it's probably on the stick that's right there. Yeah. Okay. Uh, well, the, I, the original uh, iris we'll post. The original uh, iris stick is in the other room there. So we'll need the um, the ID for the license. No, nope. process is no license. Well, the yeah, pro yeah, process is in the other room. We'll worry about electric paper. Okay. Well, the ones are processing, and the other one is you know, to, to make things that you can make separately. <laughs> 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 Okay. 
Stick around. So, some of you got to see the download on Tuesday. On Tuesday, they are downloaded. Some there was maybe ten, ten people or so got to see the download. So, there's two different ways you can download with the cables. One goes in the side, the blue and blue. Download that, the two and download the right. One goes yeah, yeah. in the top. Right there. The big part goes to the big part. <coughs> and it has to go click. 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 So remember, click. Click in the down. Okay, this one's virus. Mm -hmm. And this goes into your USB stick or your USB port. USB function, eh? That's the process window right there. Can everybody bring that up on their computer? And I'm going to be screen up all of it. Process window, yeah. So process doesn't have a license. It automatically starts for you, and you can And you can download it from the computer from the internet anytime. So is everybody running process? <laughs> this first part you won't be able to do anyway because you're not hooked up to the unit. The unit, the computer, the computer, the computer, the computer, the computer, the But if you have process running, you can <coughs> go to data download. Date and the data download, the computer. And then it's CR1 plus 2. CR1 plus 2, so red how do we go? So your screen will look blank and that's the communication data communication, download, data download. <laughs> and it brings up your download window download window how many saw this yesterday the about the incentive to get it so a couple did anyway three four or five okay you have to specify the beginning and ending. So yesterday we were collecting 1,467. So that's what I have loaded in here, 1, 1467, 
So that specify the range. Most computers will work on high speed. If yours isn't working, you might have to go to a lower speed. And the safest one is just to use 9600. 9600 would always the safest. Yeah, uh, because it's the most rugged one. It's the one that will work. If your software is going to work, 9600 will work. So, this is where I 9600. 9600 baud rate? 9600. 9600 baud rate. 9600 and a little bit of 9600 and you buy it. You will come to the high speed market. Then you select download. Download will select the bar. Uh, 1467, right? Last. So yesterday we collected, that was our winter schlumberger. Our dipole dipole started from 1468. Uh, 1,068 masala. Went to something like 3,257. 3,200. But and yesterday we did uh, like two, uh, um, we did two arrays. Two arrays. So, you know, those, those of you who were watching yesterday uh, saw me download all of the data at the same time. <laughs> or a few days ago, yeah. And then, uh, yet I then separated the two files into Werner Schlumberger and Dipole Dipole. So I can show you how to do that, but it's easiest if you just take Werner Schlumberger first, and then if you have another file, take the other one second. And that's why you write in your field book how many data points you have and where they're stored. So then on the iris unit, you have to push the download button number seven. The download rate Number seven was So that's right there. Yeah. And when you do that, you then select OK on your computer. And the two talk to each other and the download happens. Yeah. What's that? No, they can't download it. <laughs> there's what your uh, there's what the iris screen will look like, and here's what the uh, uh, pardon me the syscall will look like this, and your computer will look like this. As it downloads, the green will proceed across the uh, the uh, page. So I saying that download the So, um, right now on your, well here, on your computers, why don't you load in the data right now? Why don't you? Yeah, load the data in right now. That I I so do winter schlumberger first. Go to file. Winter schlumberger rain. Uh, Final thing. Last. Go to file. Go find the baba. Open. Open. Yeah, I'm going to open the last file because that takes me to the directory. And open park WS724 meter. 724 meter. Park 724 meter. Wait, Max, do, do they have the deal? I've given the stick that was passed around. I hope they have it. So I did that. Yummy today. Did everybody get the stick around? <laughs> Where's the 
We'll get that stick around so those of you that don't have the data will have it. But Oh, this one has it. Okay, could you pass that around? Yeah. So that stick will be passed around, but even before that, we have to, this, this software allows us to look at the data and massage it into a good form for processing, for doing modeling. Do you understand? <laughs> So you can see, we will bring up this screen. Those of you have, that have the data on right now, um, let's see here. Go to processing if you have the data. And then go to exterminate. Exterminate. So what you're going to see is a plot of resistivity, apparent resistivity, versus level or depth. My plot to the resistivity, power resistivity, that day I'm going to And those of you that have the data, this is the park data, Wenner Schlumberger, and it looks almost like this. The Wenner Schlumberger rate, you pare. So that will be a video from the YouTube app, pare. So it's a very good data set. That will get down the data set to what? This one, which is spread around, <coughs> means that you've got some problems here, some data that you're going to have to throw away. And, and it's the same here. So if you have the data on your computer, uh, open up, open file, uh, dipole, dipole now. So open the dipole, dipole one on your computer. Open the data to dipole, dipole. Nobody's moving? Yeah, what, what, what do you say again? Sorry. We have the Winter Schlumberger open right now. Open up the dipole, dipole. Use your process, go to open file, DD, park, DD, 72. So maybe explain it, if you open the last file, it goes to the last folder you were in. <coughs> and then go to your processing and your exterminate. Hold your hand up if you're seeing this on your, on your monitor now. I'll go over this again for those that are just downloading it. Yeah, who's got that stick now? Stick it here, Hale. Who has the stick now? No, no, it's, it's only on the one. Oh, it's on two now. <laughs> it's on two now? Okay. You have the data? Yes. Okay. Everybody else, who doesn't have the data now? Right there, there's a stick just behind you, Deb. So everybody sees this data set, that's the dipole dipole. So it's not as good. It, it's not nice and tight. Uh, can you tell again, process after processing, where to go? 
Processing exterminate or exterminate. Yeah, process CV. Do the aha. Exterminate the reaction. Dipole dipole or one or something. Well, the dipole dipole is this one right now. I just wanted to see the difference between a good set and a bad set. And then how do we deal? Exterminate. Processing exterminate. Okay. So that's a bad data set. Well, it's not a really bad data set, but it's not a really good data set. So now everybody go back and open up your Wenner Schlumberger one again. You just have to close that window and then go back window over paper. Open last Pidoma. file. Open. Last file. So it's a pretty standard set of steps that we go through to process data, especially if it's a good set of data. And this is exactly what we've done for the part data that you'll be looking at tomorrow. Uh, those of you that have sharp eyes will see that there's one really bad point. Where is it? <coughs> On your screen, where's the really bad point? <laughs> Did everybody see that one? So that's a bad point. These ones might be trimmed out a little bit as well. And the software package has a very good automatic filtering program. So the software has an automatic system. So close that window. Go to processing. Processing and dubbing. And choose. Uh, you know what? First of all, choose filtering. Filtering will name me. By value. Value. Now also click on your maximize screen. Maximize the view that chair they had. And that opens up the whole window for you. So, it's a critical of D1. <coughs> so these are the important parameters to look at. <laughs> the apparent resistivity, and you can see that there's one very high one, that's why this is showing as green. <laughs> and the same thing for uh, the current, that's the current AB. <laughs> In current AB. That's the uh, voltage uh, uh, MN. MN. That's the geometric factor. And here's the deviation. I'm a deviation and there's a very large deviation value which <coughs> we're going to get rid of. Close that window. And I showed you this yesterday, but you can just click on row and you'll see the variation, mm -hmm. the variation of you, yeah, along the line mm -hmm. and that that looks pretty good that's not uh, that's a pretty good plot close that one and the paper. you can look at the deviation D deviation D -E -V. D -E -V. And the deviation should be below 20 deviation so this is the standard deviation there's obviously some very bad points there. Let's look at the um, SP. SP. So this is the self potential. This is the current that's in the ground, even if we weren't there doing what we're doing. So current or inject self and you can see that there was a lot of a lot of variation. It was going from minus a half a volt to half a volt. And our VPs are in the range of uh, well, 
This is 500 millivolts to minus 500 millivolts? Minus, minus 500 millivolts, one, eh? And our voltages are 2 millivolts to 100 millivolts. 2 millivolts, eh? 3 millivolts. I think it was 300 millivolts. So it's pretty important, but the system, as long as it's not varying too much, corrects for it in the data. So the high deviation was probably when there was a big change in SP. And, and this isn't a time series here. This isn't showing change over time. This is just showing individual measurement when we took a data point, individual measurement when we took a data point across. And you can do the same for everything else. You can look at the VM, the AV. Now, these little ones up here, you can actually click on row, and there's your pseudo section. That's the pseudo section, huh? So sometimes you can tell uh, information <coughs> about how the, the quality of your data from this window, too. Yeah, but meanwhile, we're going to go back to that really good auto filtering. Uh, auto filtering. So you can do that now. Click on automatic filtering, the automatic top one in processing. Processing it. Click So the first thing that you might notice is this number down here has changed. So this is a very good data set. The winner Schlumberger, it only took out, I think, six points if you look at it, 1,524. So it only took out six points. Now go to your processing, processing and look at exterminate that data points. So the one on this side is disappeared. And there might have been a couple in this area that disappeared too. You have many columns in there. She has only up to this one. Oh, okay. Is everybody a little short there? Okay, that's good. <laughs> there are about 50 columns across of data points or data information. <laughs> so the default that has opened up for you maybe only has about uh, 10 or 12. <laughs> And it's, it's yeah. So it actually has most of the important ones. These ones are all IP. <coughs> but I'll show you how you can turn those on and off. Go to File, down to Options. Options, Baba. Then you can go to display. Display with name, eh? And everyone that has yes is showing on your uh, screen right now uh, in the data set. So I call yes, yes, can you so so yes, can you data set screen more? Yeah. You can just move across a little bit. Go low, I like to shape it up. Let's see, all mine say yes. No, no, say no. yes, they don't have it. Do they have to change to yes? Just go all the way to the end here. Uh -huh. Do they need to change? I'm going to, I'm going to tell them so. Take it all the way to the far end. Oh, it's only by by. And just double click on transmitter battery and receiver battery. Receiver battery and transmitter battery. So you just take your mouse and you go. Oh, oh sorry, on there. Double click. See how it switched to no? Double click. Double click, double click name. So you want to change those to yes. Uh, 
So just turn those two on. I have cool over there. Transmit the eggs. Only two, no? You can turn on the temperature and the date as well. Put it there. Take the put it there. How many? How many do we ask? What's that? Uh, do we temperature ask. and date? Temperature and date, yeah. Yeah, and that's all you need to do. And date over. Four. I want to get a four. I'll turn all mine off here. So we have the same thing. Uh, you should turn on the stack also. Find stack. Find stack and turn it on too. Yes. Stack go. Stack go. Yeah. Yes. All of these ones are no. No, 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 Yeah. There's, there's all no anyway, mine are yes, because I, I turned everything on. These are all IP information. And we didn't take IP. Tare, I mean, but the information is not IP. Take me, but I got off. Hello. Okay, so yours should look something like this now. That's the same. Can I be able to get it there? Hold on. is a pretty good data set. We might take out these, but we can leave them in and see how they affect the interpretation. And that might contribute a little bit to our error, but it's also some of the lower resistivities too. So then what you do is you go and uh, save as something. So save as Guame. If you Why save as if you take your data set, you've downloaded it, you put it on your computer, back it up in a separate folder immediately. So I know did that tell I be second it tell I be so I know what could be the young son and save as the run after the Niama. You don't want to process your original data set because it's possible to lose. Uh, your uh, the original data set. Original data set is going to find who can copy it. How many? You know what? And how copy you want to get him? So we're the how they actually process it. Tell it again. So yeah, we get to our thing again. Then you look at it again. Then yeah. But those of you that were there yesterday when I was downloading, I downloaded to my computer, and then I immediately put a stick in and copied the file to the stick. So now I had three copies, one here, one on my computer, and one on the stack. So copy So don't overwrite on here until you know that you have good data uh, copies that you can work on. 
So I came home and I immediately processed the data and saved additional pro, uh, copies of processed data. So now save as. Save as name. Uh, find the folder you're going to put it in. And I'm putting it in a Myanmar one. Uh, it in here. So I'll have something distinctive. I'm just doing this for the presentation right now. So you can pick up the name that way and I call it auto all the time because I've just auto filtered automatically filtered so I call it auto once you've done that just move down a little bit in your in your data file Move down until you find one of these is not checked, that it's blank. <coughs> you know what, we'll do that later. I'll show you in the uh, dipole dipole. Open up the dipole dipole now. So in the dipole dipole again, you'll notice there's a whole pile of zero data down here, which is not good. Plus the big spread like that. Dipole dipole tends to be noisier. Because the current is essentially spread out more, it's weaker when you get further away from where the current's going in. If this was a winter or a winter schlumberger, then the current would be much stronger in between. When a schlumberger race or not, we. That's why we, That's why if we only have time to do one technique, we use Wenner or Wenner Schlumberger arrays. So let's let's do the uh, auto automatic filtering again. Move your data right back up to the top so you have number one. And now you can see the number down here. It's removed, it's removed 179 points. Let's look at that. Exterminate the data points. And that's looking a lot better now. You see there's only a couple of points outside of the main area. Sort of stretched out a little bit up here but, but looking much better. Can you tell again that they don't know how to do auto filtering? Auto filtering? Okay. So you go to processing. Processing. Uh, That's the automatic filtering. 
Yeah. 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 Let's say that I wanted to get rid of these two points here. I could do that a couple of ways. One is to use this screen. And you, can, you can click on it with your mouse. And you'll see that it's red now. And I could get rid of that one like that too. And not alone, I See, it's working today, guys. <laughs> so you can get rid of them like that, and all you have to do is go OK, and those two will have been removed. And I can bring them back in if I want to. So if I had quite a few and I didn't want to go click, 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 click. I just have to look at what the value of rho is here. It's under 100. Do you see that? It's under 100 ohm meters. So what I can do is go back here, go to processing, and see the filtering value. Value here. What's going to click up here so I can see the whole screen? And so I can enter in, I know that there's something that's below 100. So this is the min value and the max value. So I could get rid of anything under 100 just by doing that. You see, I, I entered 100 there, and I go over here and click on apply. Apply with it, so if I go back up and take a look at that, okay, so those two points have disappeared now, so there's nothing below 100. Now sometimes with a data set, uh, when we're out, maybe we don't like anything that's below 5 millivolts. We think that's bad data. 5 millivolts, I'll go. So with that filtering and filtering it value, we can actually enter in VP here five millivolts. VP five millivolts scenario. Yeah. You can see these values are negative, but they'll turn into positive. The row values are positive right now. So. It's, it's, it, it's possible to see negative voltage uh, because it just depends on what the orientation of the electrodes was. And sometimes with dipole dipole, it's got flipped uh, MN electrodes just the way it works. So now we can. Uh, Save that one. Save the bame. And unfortunately, I don't have my window set on default, so. Uh, so it's got the default WS, I have to change that. You dipole, dipole, but again, I have auto. So that's a pretty easy processing. Um, when we take a look at um, at the data that we took out uh, on Tuesday, the dipole, dipole is is. Uh, has a lot of bad data in it, so we'll do some other processing of it and look at that tomorrow. In that case, 
In that case, we're going to be removing some of the deviation data that's really high. And a few of the high voltages you'll see tomorrow. So now what do I do? Uh, oh, well, there's one other thing that, uh, two other things about the data that we took in the park. Everybody remembers we had a 90 degree turn like this. We had four electrodes that went 90 degrees at the far end. And then we had uh, four electrodes, sorry. Then we had it coming up to this side of the park until electrode 64. And then 65 to 72 curved off like that. So we wanted to get rid of the data that wasn't in a straight line. When we were uh, interpreting modeling the data. So that's a little more difficult to do, but you can do it in this package too. So we go to processing. Processing the comment. Actually, just let me. I also wanted to just show you. You can see the data that's been taken out because they're not checked. So we've kept all the data that's checked. And if I wanted to, I could actually select all the data again. Select all the data again. So I select the And then I can say keep the selected data. Keep selected data. So selected the data with time. And it will, it will pick them all up again. Okay? And that's the way I use this same window here, selection, when I was splitting the Wenner Schlumberger and the dipole dipole. That's for another day. So we want to get rid of some electrodes that we know are bad. So we go processing and we go down to advanced processing. Advanced processing. And then we come down here, and instead of calling them electrodes, they call them nodes. Reject node. Reject node. Mode, mode or node? Node. So now, we know the bad electrodes we had were at, on the far side, the four that went sideways. We know that they were electrodes 1, 2, 3, and 4. Didn't it only yet? And they were at positions 0 meters, 4 meters, 8 meters, and 12 meters. Then we have position 0 meter, 4 meter, 8 meter, 12 meter. These are the Ys. We don't have any Y values. These are the Zs. We can ignore those. Z. But we want to remove 0 to 12, so the first four electrodes. Does everybody yeah, understand that? I go OK. And you see what happened? The way the system works is it starts collecting from electrode 1 and 72 because it works from the end to try to finish all the measurements it has to do on the first cable. So every, cable, every uh, piece of data that was in that from 0, 4, 8, and 12 have been removed. 0, 4, 8, and 12. So if we go down, when we get to 16 in that first column, Oh, <laughs> uh, one little correction, which some, some people know about. We, I, accidentally 
loaded a file that had five meter spacing instead of four meter spacing. Yeah. So um, maybe before we go any further, I'll show you how to correct that one. I believe you have the answer. You have the answer. So you, you make mistakes with the five meter spacing. I know it's hard to believe I made a mistake, Parker, <laughs> but I did. Oh, Once. <laughs> That's a joke. So. I want to correct. By accident, I put five meter spacing in the sequence file. I want it to be four meter spacing in the sequence file. Sequence file, but I'm not going to get it. So, I'm going to tell you four meter spacing loads in there. So, actually, I'm going to go back and reopen that dipole dipole. And I'm just going to open the original one so we can see. So you can see how it goes 0, 5, 10, 15, 20. So I need to modify my spacing. Now these are the X's. The first four are the X, Y, and Z. Again, we ignore Y and Z. This is the spacing of the A electrode, spacing of the B electrode, Spacing of the uh, M and N electrodes, okay? So A, B, M, and N, that's what we have spacing in the So I need to make those four. spacing but it's not working for me right now for some reason it's the modify spacing Okay, so even the best of us get confused. So we're modifying it to four meter spacing. I accidentally left it as increment, so it shifted along instead of multiplying it. So I have to choose multiply. Choose multiply. You'll see what I mean. And we're going from zero. Oh, it still didn't work.
Actually, just the other way to do it. Uh, no, I just I forgot. It, it's really awkward the way to do it, and I forgot and that's why I had to do it. What you mean you can't? You can't do the increment. What's that? You can't do the increment. No, you actually multiply by 0.8. I forgot, and that's what I did. But should the other one go to zero? Nope. This increment is shifted. Okay, I apologize. We had done five meter spacing. We wanted four meter spacing. So we had to multiply everything by four fifths, which is 0.8. Five meter spacing. So if I had done four meter spacing and I meant to do 10 meter spacing, I would have to multiply by 2.5. Did everybody follow that? I'll just do it again. So I'm going to read the original file in again. There's the dipole dipole. I go to processing. It's very awkward the way they do it. I'm going to multiply. Yeah, I went into it. Uh, it's very awkward this uh, uh, correction, but this works. leave one and the other ones because it's not going to change. <laughs> so we want it to be four, not five. So it's four over five, which whoops, equals zero. Eight. And we're going from zero. <laughs> Okay. So if we already applied the increment correction, do they have to go back to the increment is zero. We don't want it to increment. We but, want it. But if they already did the increment, do they have to go back to the original file? Just go for the original file. Okay. If you did increment, did you see how I always went back to the original file? It's just easier to do that when you've made a mistake. So now I'll just do the quickly the auto filtering that we did. There's only a couple more things we're going to try to cover today. So now, if I go back and I do the advanced to reject the node, advanced remember? Advanced. No, to now I can actually reject, reject 0 to 12. Very quick. Max, they cannot. No, no, well, you saw that one already, right? <laughs> Remember, we wanted to reject the nodes. So we needed to reject from 0 to 12. Here, I'll do it again for you. So you go to advanced. Advanced with our main. You go down to reject notes. Reject notes, man. And then you say you want to get rid of from zero to twelve. Zero to twelve. So that was electrodes one, two, three, and four. Zero to twelve. The thing that we leave only one meter spacing or one meter is not possible. So see, there's the first time we get to an electrode that's not 0 to 12. 
16, that's electrode number 5. 16 electrode number 5 is what? And you can see they're checked. And I checked, you got 1, 2, 3, 4, and I'm at 1, I will not check it. Check, 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 look up. So we get one more chance to practice this. Is everybody good? Sit down. Hello. We generally have now. Is everybody good? Kevin, good there? Yep. Work. Okay, uh, I get some modify spacing again, then they don't get it. What's that? Modify spacing. Modify oh, spacing. do it again? Yeah. Yeah, so we're going to do it again now because we're also getting rid of the last eight eight electrodes. Okay. So that's not the ten. Not the ten, electrode would go eight. We're going to remove the last eight electrodes that's from this data set. That's on the So the, those that's electrodes are sixty five to seventy two. So electrode that's chasing on the sanity. That's eight. That's eight electrodes. So the position of the electrode 65 is, whoop, should be 65 minus one there, is that? 256. I didn't even do that right, did it? So it's electrode 65 minus 1, that equals 64 times 4. So it's actually in position 256. Everybody How do you get 64? Why, why do you do minus 1? Well, if you, if you take the spaces between 1 and 65, there's only 64 spaces. Or 65 tickle general. A meter time is about one hundred sixty four five is about sixty four meters. Uh, the electrode one. Oh, sixty four. Uh, spacing. The electrode one is at zero meters, right? It's not at four meters. It's at zero meters. Electrode. Let's take electrode two. What position is electrode two at? Electrode two is position about. It's at four meters. It's not at 8 meters, it's at 4 meters. <coughs> so it's 2 minus 1 times 4. So this one's 65 minus 1 times 4. Okay. And electrode 72 is 72 minus 1 times 4, which is 284. <coughs> so let's go back and we'll get rid of those electrodes. So we go to processing. Processing. I will move slowly. Advanced. Advanced. Reject no. Reject no. So now we got want to get rid of from 256. Initially. 
to 284. Everybody with me? Yeah, Okay. Okay, hey, Pa. So let's just take a look down at the end. And so now it's turned off everyone that is in those last eight electrodes. Yeah. Okay, so I'll save this one and you can save it. Let's save the Luyare. As so, I'm going to save it as, and you can use uh, whatever you want. Uh, I generally do this as underscore, and I call it some some had problems. The electrode removal. The rejecting notes. Yep, we'll go over again. And uh, after. After it is done and still checked, it's not unchecked. Okay, so now it was processing advanced. And then go out of Does everybody have the four it's meters it's spacing? It should be. It should be. It should be. Any problems? Anybody have any problems with that? Okay. 
So that's that's good for today. You should, you should do that correction to your winner Schlumberger as well. And I will lay when the slam is rain and lay, then don't see about it. It will go down your exam. Zero to twelve, two fifty six to two eighty four. And, and you don't have to do the shift, you don't have to do the point eight shift because the winner Schlumberger was collected at four meters. When the slam is rain, I don't know the name of the man, I don't know the name of the man, I don't know the name of the man. Right. So you don't have to multiply the winner Schlumberger. And you can do that tonight and you'll be ready for tomorrow to do the inversions. Okay, thanks everyone. Do we want to say anything for tomorrow? Yes, so the GWB team would like to invite everybody out for lunch tomorrow. ดูอีกอีกหลังหลังอีกหลังอีกหลังอีกหลังอีกหลังอีกหลังอีกหลังอีกหลังอีกหลังอีกหลังอีกหลังอีกหลังอีกหลังอีกหลังอีกหลังอ